everyone of the enemies were to be utterly destroyed. But the Bible said the saw and the people would not do it. There are so many people like this today. They know what God said, but they still would not do it. The penalty for such treason, please write that down, treason, you know what to do. You know it's wrong. You know Saul ain't no good. You know Saul got a spirit of religion. Just, just got the spirit, talk about Jesus, but ain't living Jesus. You know it. The penalty for treason and mutiny is very severe, very severe, very severe. It is so easy to obey God. I don't know why so many people outwardly disobey him. I guess their pride and their self-centeredness steal their fear from God. Your pride and your self-centeredness steals the fear of God. You ain't even scared no more. You didn't get caught up so deep in pride and being self-centered to God and steady waters. Touch not my anointing. Close your mouth. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't put your hand in there. Don't touch it. And you steady. You so caught up in yourself and so full of pride to the fear of God ain't even in you no more. Oh, whatever. I just have to suffer the consequences. Whatever. And so what? I don't care. <laughs> Amen? Listen, listen, listen. But that's because you didn't allow a door to be open. To even make you think like this. Amen? <laughs> now listen. One of the ramifications of sin that most people don't enjoy is the prophet's confirmation. Mm. Y'all hear that? Most of the ramifications of sin is that most people don't enjoy the pastor preaching the truth. The prophet's confirmation. Because God had already dealt with you in your sleep. <coughs> he didn't deal with you in your room, in your car. He didn't told you, I don't do that. But then God sent word through the word. The pastor, the prophet, speaking what thus said the Lord. And you can't stand it, or them. That's the spirit make you can't stand your pastor. You used to love him. Y'all better listen to me. Samuel came right away and rebuked the king. But Saul cried out how he had served the Lord so well. See, when you're in your mess, you don't believe that you out of you in, you, you, you in your mess. So he, so, he, so he cried out, how you serve the Lord. So I did this for that church. I did that. I did this. Uh, if it wasn't for me, this would sit down somewhere. Amen. And it got puffed up. Go sit down. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And that's where your reward at too, baby. While you steady crying and crying and begging and, and sitting on this. I did this. And if it wasn't for me, she wouldn't have. You done got your reward right there. Amen. Amen. So he cried out what he had did and how good he was, okay? And so how, how he done so well for the Lord. All that God had c commanded, he, he, he pretend. He told Samuel, thought Samuel didn't know. Samuel knew everything, he was a prophet. God revealed things to him. So he pretended like he had it together in front of Samuel. So he said, I did everything God said. The prophet actually had to bring to his attention what he had did and what he did. So y'all can read verses 9, 20, 10 through 19. We're not gonna keep, we're not gonna keep that. It will show you how people, even leaders, squirm under the prophet's ministry. A lot of people can't sit up under this ministry if they're not right. Amen. They're not gonna sit. If they got an itch, they're gonna go get scratched. <laughs> they ain't gonna wanna stay here and get it knocked out. <laughs> You hear me? So, I watch this happen quite often. People who know what to do to be obedient to Christ 
somehow they just don't obey him. Somehow they just don't. They know what to do, but they don't. So he had pride, self-centeredness, and what else? Disobedience and rebellion. Come on, it's the soul of spirit. Write them down. Because it's a part of it. Pride, self-centeredness. It's all about you. What about me? I'm sick of this. I'm not, I ain't getting nothing. I ain't got nothing. I need this. I, need, I ain't got time to be praying for her. Look at what I'm going through. Pride, self-centeredness, rebellion, and disobedience. The four. Fantastic four. The fantastic four to take you out of here. Amen? But somehow they just won't obey. Then, when they do sin, they don't see it. They accuse, they accuse the pastor of being prejudiced or touchy. My friend, you are in deep trouble when you sin and don't even realize it. And somebody trying to tap your shoulder and pull your coattail and tell you, hold up, baby, something ain't right, I'm sin. And you steady say, I, I'm okay, I don't know what you're talking about. You in deep trouble. You in trouble. Amen? Amen. You are in bigger trouble when a spiritual leader, your pastor, points it out to you and you still make excuses for it or even deny you did it or said it. Y'all got that? Isn't it something? Saul actually blamed his disobedience and poor leadership on the people. And Saul said to Samuel, Yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And I have gone the way which the Lord sent me. And I have brought Agad, the king of the Amalekites, and have uh, utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the spoil, the sheep and the oxen, oxen, and the chief of these things, which should be, have been utterly destroyed, the sacrifice unto the Lord thy God of Gilgal. So what he was doing was, he flipped the script. He flipped the script on the people. Amen? You was doing one thing you knew better not to do. But just to save face, you turned. Now these people was rolling with you, now you gonna turn on them. Now it's they fall. But they, 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 they was rolling with you. Cause you was the one to do better. So now, the enemy always uses us to use this, this spirit of accusation. And what's that the scapegoat spirit? I don't know if I taught it, but I'm gonna teach it. Where you find excuses and escapes. Well, yeah, I couldn't help it because uh, see, Sister Terry was mad at you, so I was mad too. You understand? Well, Sister Terry talked about you like a dog, so I figured if she talked, I could talk too. Well, I seen her steal that candy bar, and if she can steal it. Why can't I? I see Kenny go in your office and steal that pack of cookies. So if he can steal the pack of cookies and you not see it, why can't somebody else steal some cookies? That's the problem. That's the problem. Two wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. God got to deal with everybody accordingly. Amen? Listen, listen, listen. Saul was in trouble. Saul knew more than the people. Saul was the leader of the pack. Saul knew better. Amen? Ha! I'm going to say this. Y'all got the Holy Ghost. Some people don't. 
So while they're trying to lead you, you're supposed to be leading them, but instead they lead 